Hello there guys, welcome to Luna's World. We have an X-Plane video for you today, but we're going to be explaining, or I'm going to be explaining, um, how and why you should use um, Ortho 4XP. Now, if you don't know what it is, it's basically uh, a way of using photorealistic images um, generated by maps uh, that are imported into X-Plane 11, and then you overlay the roads and everything else uh, on top. So you get the autogen. It sounds really complicated to do. And if you read some of the comments on some of the tutorial videos, you would think that it is pretty complicated to do. Truth is, it's really not. So what you're seeing right now is default uh, Innsbruck. And uh, I want you to use this to compare with the video at the end where we actually have the ortho installed and you can see the difference. So um, bear with me. This is, um, I'm not an expert in this, but I have gone through it and um, try to, you know, creating this video to uh, make it as clear as possible. There are already some tutorials out there. Um, my aim is to make this as clear and as quick and, and as efficient as possible. So hopefully I do that. So thanks for being here. Let's get into it and let's get you guys set up with Ortho for XP. Okay, so let's get you on your way with setting up Ortho for XP. So the first thing you need to do is just get the browser. You need to download two pieces of software. The first of which is called Python, and the links to these uh, pieces of software will be in the description. So download that, the one that's appropriate to you. And then you need the Ortho for XP software, which is a Dropbox uh, link. And you need to go up to the top right here and click download and download that to your computer. So when you get it, it comes in a zip file. Let me just open this up here. So this was the zip file. I've unzipped it and it basically opens into this. In order to start it, you need to go to bin, which is the second one down. And scroll down until you get to this one. It'll be Ortho 4XP and it'll be an application. Uh, there'll be a number. This number might be different depending on which version. Um, and then what I've done is I've created a, um, uh, a shortcut on the desktop just so I can get to it easier. So let's just open this up and I'll show you what this is all about. Um, it looks scary, but it's really not. This is a workflow. So work from the top to the bottom. So the first thing we do is that we click on um, Earth Tile Map. So click on that and you can scroll. So if you use the shortcuts here, if you hold the right mouse button uh, down, then you can move the map around. And it takes a bit of time to catch up sometimes. Um, and what we want to do is select an area um, of interest. Now I've done, um, I've done Innsbruck, which is right here. If you can see that, you can't actually zoom in on this map, which is a bit annoying. So what you need to do is you need to hold the shift button and just click on the areas that you want. I've done those two areas there. So once you've done that, you need to click on build masks, build overlays. Okay, and then don't do anything else, but click back. If you click onto the um, the task bar, you'll see that Ortho 4XP is actually three windows. You've got this... Um, this sort of uh, like DOS prompt window. That's a command thing that just works in the background. You've got that original screen and then you've got the tiles collection screen. So we need to go from this, once you've done those things, you need to go back to this screen and we need to change some things here on the, on the provider and the zoom level. Um, use OSM, that seems to be the best one uh, to use for the maps. And then this is important. You wanna choose a value that is um, represents uh, what kind of a machine you have. Now, 11 is a pretty low resolution, very, very low. It's not going to look great at all. The higher the number, the more gigabytes it's going to take up. I use 17. I have tried going to 18, and the difference between 17 and 18 is absolutely huge. So a file, or a tile, I should say, that's produced with a zoom level of 17 tends to be around 3 to 5 gig, maybe maybe a bit more than that. Um, 18 tends to produce gigabyte, you know, files that are sort of 50, 60, 70 gigabytes. I just don't have that kind of space. Um, so unfortunately, um, well, not unfortunately, 17 is a pretty good uh, representation. It gives me a nice level of detail without the tiles being super big. So you can choose that. Well, you play around with it by all means, but that works for me. Um, and then 
we go back so once you've selected the zoom level and the base source you want to click on ignore all this stuff I don't touch this and it, and it seems to work fine for me I like to have overlays because I want to see traffic I want to see lights I want to see trees um, all that good stuff that X Plane 11 has to offer so we need to click on this it will bring up this here and this is the um, the folder that you need to go to so it's your X Plane 11 folder global scenery and then X Plane global scenery don't go any further than that don't double click on this you need this folder so you're above this folder and just click on select folder and then go back to the map screen and then literally click on batch build I'm not going to do this because I've already done it and what that will do I'll tell you what I will do it and I'll show you what happens so you click that and the first thing to notice is absolutely nothing happens in this screen that is completely normal you need to go to this screen and you'll see here on the right hand side all of this stuff is now starting to be built so um, I don't know what half of this stuff means I don't think we really need to but you can see that it's doing something and then um, what will happen is eventually these three bars here will start to fill up um, in order so the top one first as it does its thing this will progress to the top that was finished and then it will download it that will finish and then it will convert it at the very end of this process you will see tiles one to two or two of two and then it will say completed in however long it took um, right at the bottom and these three bars here will be full if you interrupt it before that finishes you're not going to get it's not going to work basically so I recommend you do this sort of at night time when you, you know it's tempting to come back and have a look just let it do its thing I'm going to stop this because I've already done it you can see there that the bar is just starting to uh, come along and um, this thing takes a while you know you really do have to be patient like I said I set it up overnight you can even allow it to uh, shut down your computer once it's finished which is kind of or exit the program which is kind of cool let it do its thing okay so uh, let's close that let's assume it's all worked and it's done go back to your ortho for XP folder we'll scroll back here now what will appear in here now of course because I haven't done it um, it's not in here but you will get a file a, f a file not a file a folder sorry below utils that says ortho XP overlay okay so that is really important you need to copy that file and you need to put it into your X plane um, custom scenery so let me find it here so there you go so that is the file that I've already copied across that needs to go into the custom scenery of your X plane 11 folder okay so that deals with just the overlays all the data it's nav data isn't it I think let me just open it up yeah it's basically nav data so that that's what you need for the uh, roads to all sync up and look um, like they are uh, in the right place so go back to your ortho XP folder and you need to go into tiles this is where the actual scenery is um, you can see I've generated one two three four five pieces of uh, or five tiles here um, and it gives you the coordinates which is you know which is okay you just have to be a bit pedantic with knowing what tiles are what so if you if this is your first time doing it you're only going to have one folder in here you need to copy that folder across to the same location so go back to your X plane where is it can't see it there it is X plane 11 um, custom scenery oops not custom data custom scenery and throw it in here and again you can see that I've got one two three four five tiles at the moment so um, in terms of copying and pasting that's all you need to do the next step is incredibly important so you need to open up this configuration file scenery packs it will be at the top or the bottom let's open it up this looks scary but it's really not when you install um, let me just do this just for ease when you open this up and you've installed you've copied across your tiles basically it's going to look like this so you're going to have the ortho tiles here at the top now that means that it's going to be on top of every piece of scenery that you've got and we don't want that because we want it on the bottom we want this to be the foundation if you like so you need to copy 
or control X that and put it right at the bottom below the very last piece of scenery. That way everything else will be built on top of your um, scenery. Now this is incredibly important here. Um, melded in with this ortho stuff will be your overlays. Now you have to make sure that your overlays is above global airports. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, you're not gonna you're not gonna get the um, the roads and the, uh, the the all the stuff that X Plane Eleven provides. It's not gonna work. You're not gonna see it. So that needs to be above global airports and above the demo areas. Don't really matter. But anyway, above that and that should work. And then you file and then you save. Let me just make sure I haven't changed anything. And that is it. That really is it. That's exactly what you do. You fire up X Plane 11 and you uh, spawn in wherever you know, the location is that you've created the tiles, and you will have glorious, glorious um, scenery. I'm going to fire this up and um, I'll bring you back and we'll we'll have a look at it. Okay, guys. So see you soon. Hello there, guys. So here we are in uh, Innsbruck with our photorealistic scenery. Let me just. Um, show you the mountains here so we'll just make a left turn absolutely gorgeous stuff um, we'll just lose a bit of altitude but as you can see if you look at that angle there all the roads all the railway lines all the towns and cities or towns not really cities are all as if you were looking at Google maps there we go there's a nice view of the uh, mountains coming up so again you'll see that they're snow capped even though we don't have any um, seasonal textures in the shadowing looks absolutely amazing Look at the canal down there. All right, so just descending a bit. I, I haven't got this. Um, we're in the glider. We're in the Antares 20E, by the way. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the scenery. I haven't got this thing set up properly, so don't judge the flying. It's just a way of seeing the scenery here. So look at the mountains. Look at the way all that's working beautifully together. Let's just have a look at a night scene so you can see that we've got cars on the road. Um, the overlay is working. We've got the lights and the cities. Absolutely glorious, glorious stuff. Let's just go back. So you can see that all that works. And I think, like I said in the beginning, it's well worth that little bit of uh, learning curve and obviously the, the time that it takes to generate the tiles is absolutely worth it. Especially if you fly regularly in a particular area, you know, your hometown or, or perhaps an exotic place. And you just want that extra little edge. You don't have to do this for the whole world, of course. But if you're in a built up area and, um, and you're just taking off and you look directly down and you look at the textures, of course you're gonna see the sort of flatness of it. So this really works best you know from a height but there is a way of um, adjusting making the detail around airports even more detailed than the rest of the area so when you do take off you get the, the same level of detail anyway that's probably another video but hopefully this has given you an idea about what um, the enhance hopefully this is giving you an idea about how it enhances the look of your sim and in many cases increases the frame rate. So um, if you want to go back to the beginning of the video where I'm showing you stock um, Innsbruck and you can compare the two and see what you think. But I hope that's been useful guys. I'll do my best to answer any questions if you're having any problems installing it. I'm not an expert on it but I'll certainly share um, any knowledge that I have and uh, I'm loving it. So expect to see some more ortho stuff in uh, in my videos so thanks again guys and i'll see you in the next one take care